Dr. Boyer? 3.5. All right. So we want to do some uh, stuff on 3.5 today. So it's, what's going to talk about? Spectrums. Yes. We want to talk about the formation of a spectrum. Yep. Spectrums. Okay, what, we'll, we'll talk about yeah, what spectrums good. are. So oh, there's a spectrum. There's a spectrum. So talk to me about that picture. We're taking up a weird picture up here. Dr. Yeah, Dr. let's see. So we got like some lines. We got some lines. The idea is this. You've got light, light okay. coming from some source, say a sun, for instance. Okay. And we're going to put it through a prism. A prism, all right. Yep. And then we're going to break it into its colors. Well, what does that look like? I well, thought it should look like a rainbow. You would think so, because white light has all the colors, but there's a catch. You're not guaranteed that what the light gives off, is giving off is going to show you all the colors, because as you can see here, yeah, this, we don't have all the colors. Look at this that. This is like missing some light. There are some huge blank spaces yeah, in like there. There's no yellow there. No yellow. I mean, you got uh, violet and blue yeah. and red, looks like some sure. red here, but what happened to everything in between? So that tells us something, folks, about um, what we're about to talk about. So, okay, so you can determine the composition of an astronomical body by its spectrum. Spectrum, yes. So, because we've never been to the stars. Nope. No, no, well, no. we got kind of close to the sun with our satellites, but that's it. It's still close isn't there. That's right. It'd burn up. So yeah. how can we tell what's in a star? We analyze the light with a prism, basically. Prism, that's exactly right. And um, spectroscopy captures um, and analyzes the spectrum. So the study of analyzing the light using prisms, if you will, is a study, uh, a science called spectroscopy. That's it. So everybody say spectroscopy. All right. <laughs> and this is a spectrogram. A spectrogram. Okay. Yes. All right. So we've got spectroscopy and spectrograms, and it assumes that every atom or molecule will have a unique signature. That's right. What do you mean by that? Let's take a look at that. Ah. So spectrums are formed by something. What are they formed by? Well, this, this is there we go. an atom. Remember we talked in the last podcast about how electrons fall from level to level. So they can fall down or they can go up. So when they fall down or when they go up, they fall down a specific amount. So let's say this amount. Well, this amount corresponds to one specific color wavelength of light. The color might be visible and it might be invisible, it might be infrared invisible. or something like that. So yeah, we've got this kind of weird deal, but they give off very specific wavelengths. So every atom has a unique signature according to how the electrons move up and down through its energy okay. orbitals. So they've got like a, a blueprint. A blueprint, exactly. Oh, no two atoms. The I'm for. There you go. No two atoms have exactly the same spacing on their energy levels. So no two atoms are going to give you exactly the same spectrum from absorption or emission. Okay. So that makes sense, Dr. Boyer. So it turns out there's different types of spectrum. Exactly. There's actually two kinds of spectrum. So what are the different types of spectra? There's continuous. Yes. So what's a continuous? It's the spectra of a black body. Now we know about black body. Hey, we time. did that before, remember? It's got that little graph thing, right? Well, we did the graph of the spectrum. And you guys are going to do an activity in class with uh, black body diagrams. Exactly. If you haven't already done it. Notice that the line is continuous. There are no okay. gaps inside of it. So no this, gaps. That's what continuous This is a continuous means. spectrum. Okay. Yes, indeed. And this is true of objects that are solids and have a dense gas, right? That's right. All right. So this would be ah, an example perfect. of a continuous spectrum. Notice that the colors are all there. There's no missing colors. No like gaps we saw, anything. We saw some missing colors in that last one. Didn't That's we? right. And this one has all the right This is colors. a continuous spectrum right here. All right. So we've got a continuous spectra. The second kind is called an emission, emission. line spectra. Okay. What in the world? It's produced by hot tenuous? Tenuous. Tenuous. What's the word tenuous? Tenuous from? means Thin. Gases are thin? Well, it depends upon the density of the gas. How many molecules do you have in a given volume? If you don't have very many molecules in a given volume, we call it a thin, tenuous gas. Okay. So our atmosphere, for instance, is a tenuous gas. Okay. So what would be an example that's not a tenuous gas? A uh, star, maybe? A star where all the gases are compacted tightly together. The thing that you don't understand, folks, is that a, a star, the sun, is just a bunch of gas. That's it. 
um, that's on fire. It's actually not really fire in the sense it's a nuclear reaction. But um, it's just a bunch of gas, and it's not tenuous. It's not thin. It's very, very thick. It's a very dense yeah, gas. It's a very dense gas. So that's a little bit different. And so fluorescent tubes, Aurora, auroras, borealis, and interstellar clouds, and Dr. Boyer just said, of the atmosphere of the Earth, Earth. is a tenuous gas. Yeah. And you kind of can see that this picture kind of shows you the emission spectrum, right? Yes. So if you pass a gas like hydrogen, so if I have a bulb, which would be a tenuous gas, filled just with hydrogen gas, hydrogen's formula is H2, and then we uh, have a bulb that's going to give off some light, and then you pass that through a prism, it produces this specific signature. Hydrogen has a red line here, a teal line here, a blue line here, and then a couple other lines. Um, we're actually going to do an activity like this in class where yep. we're going to actually look at these things. But it turns out that sodium, sodium isn't the same as hydrogen. Why? How come? Well, that's because its electron structure is different than hydrogen. Yeah, and we just and it's got that. a different signature. But it's the same idea. You just yep. take another bulb, and this bulb is filled with sodium. The symbol for sodium is Na, and it goes through a prism, and it gives off only two lines, two little yellow lines. It's the classic yellow doublet in sodium, as yeah. it's called. It's called the yellow doublet, that's right. And so, and you can look, helium, he's uh, got a different signature, neon, and mercury, they're all different. They are. So if I point my spectroscope at a star, mm -hmm. and I see these lines, actually stars are different because they're not black bodies. They're close. Yeah, that I, I won't see these lines. Well, you're going to see some of these lines, right. but they're all going to be jumbled together. Yeah. Because in the, uh -huh. in the atmosphere of the sun, for instance, hydrogen is mixed with helium, and so all these lines are going to be So if I had hydrogen together. and sodium together, yeah. I would have this, and I'll put it, I don't have a yellow pin here, I'll make them green. I would have this doublet right here, that's so, right. and I would say, well, that's hydrogen and sodium, sodium mixed together. They would all be on one line. Okay, yeah. that's pretty easy. So you can figure out what's in a star, by studying the light that comes from it. That's right. Okay. So let's compare the spectrums. All right. There's two kinds of spectrums, right? There's emission spectra and there is absorption spectra. So you can have a light source. So this one. So what's the first one, Dr. Boyer? This, this is, one right here. Notice this is a there are no gaps yeah, or this, anything. That's a continuous. This spectrum. is continuous right here. Okay. And so a light bulb would give you continuous okay. spectrum. Okay. Now this one right here, suppose you have a cloud of, cloud of gas. gas that's between the light source and you. Right. Well, what happens is, is that this cloud here is going to absorb some of the light. Okay. And depending upon what gas it's made out of, it's going to absorb certain lines, and we can see it right here. Oh, yeah, there's a gap, there's a black line. Here. Exactly. Sorry, a black line, it's a missing line. That's a missing line, and that's because this gas cloud has absorbed the light that has those wavelengths, but it left everything else to go through. Okay. And by knowing what these wavelengths are, you can figure out what this gas cloud was made up of. Okay, okay. we'd use that chart that we had just Exactly. Ago. Okay. And then here's the emission line. And in this case right here, the gas cloud gives off light directly, and we detect it, and there is the lines that... So the these two cloud. pictures, the second and the third picture, are really the same element, aren't yes, they? Yes, look, you can see where this is at position is in this position right here. Exactly the same. Two different ways of figuring out what's inside that gas cloud. And so this one is called the emission spectrum, and this is called the absorption spectrum. Right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Right. All right. So we can identify atoms by their light. And I think we've already alluded to this. Yep. But if you take a look, you can take a look at the different. So we have a, a, a nebula. Wow, here's an example. Here's a nebula. Yeah, we kind of already talked about this. But if you had a nebula, uh, which is a, what is a nebula, by the way? It's a collection of gas and dust so in gas between and dust stars. In between stars. And if you look at this, this has lots of lines in it. But if you actually look at this, Here's the hydrogen lines. Do you see how this line corresponds with this? Here's a, pur a purple line, or a teal, or whatever color you call it. And see how these line up. And then the purple lines line up. But then I can say there's also, that's the hydrogen. And then helium, you can see he helium's lines here. So this is kind of a big puzzle, isn't it, Dr. It Martin? is. So if you look at all of these bottom four, they add up to this line right here. 
Imagine the good old days when a poor astronomer had to sit down and look at all of this and then try to figure out Which what elements, elements were present. Now we got computers to do that. Thank right? goodness for computers. But that's how they did it in the old days. That's right. They just had their prisms. Slow, laborious, tedious. But they figured out what was in the stars. And um, they did some brilliant work. Oh yeah, it was amazing. Look. So next thing we want to look at is the absorption emission of hydrogen. This is an interesting one. Let's just look at one element, hydrogen, yep. which is probably the easiest one to talk about. So um, we've got two lines there. Yes. The absorption and the um, emission line of hydrogen. So talk to me about that, Dr. Boyer. There we go. All right. So this is what you would see from your spectrometer. Yeah, OK. But what we would like to do is to make a graph out of it. Okay. And so we translate that to this graph. So here's wavelength. Wavelength, okay. And so you can see wavelengths going from violet to red. And that's violet to red. Okay. And then here is intensity. How bright is the color? Okay. And then so we get this nice graph out. I see like little dips. They exactly. See these dips here? Yeah. That's where the absorption is taking place, and they match up perfectly oh. right here. That's what's going on. So, you know, the reality is we say the, these things look like this, guys, which is easy to picture. But scientists don't study these colored pictures anymore. They just look at the graphs. They love graphs. And then the emission one is just the opposite. It's just measuring uh, the brightness of it. it's an emission spectrum. Notice that these um, these peaks now correspond with the uh, dips in the other graph, don't they? It's two ways to look at the same thing. You're looking at the same thing. Yep, exactly. So we can analyze hydrogen that way, and that's pretty interesting to do. Okay. Ah. So and here's another way to look at it. What's that? Wow, look at this. This is a spectrum from okay. light given off okay, by Okay, so we're comet. analyzing a comet. Yes. Because we can't like go to the comet and step on no, it and test no, it. No, no, We look at the light. We actually have recently, but oh, that's back when this was made, that wasn't possible. And now we make a graph out of it, just like we did before. Okay. Wow. All kinds and of interesting look at things. all of the things that are inside look this at comet. Look funny letters. What are those letters? O H N H. Oh, oxygen, hydrogen. Okay, so those are elements. I'm yes. Table. Yes. Nitrogen, hydrogen. Of course, CO2 you recognize as carbon dioxide right here, uh -huh. and CN, well, cyanide, cyanide, yeah. cyanide, and it says carbon. I think it carbon got, got kind of cut off right here. So we can analyze what's in a comet by looking at its light, exactly. looking at the graph. Not just individual atoms, but actually molecules that, is so that cool. are present. Yes, that a comet so has cool. molecular constituents. Cool. It's wonderful. And then we have a second picture below there, and that's and a solar, which would be the sun. That would be the sun. And, that's and you can see the fine lines here. You can see the little dark. This is an absorption spectrum again. So right here. I see some black lines. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's they're very faint, thin. But they're there. Oh, but then when you graph it out, dips. now you can see it much better on a graph, which is why we like to do it this way. It shows up those absorption lines so much and better. And that tells you what elements are in the Exactly. Sun. And here we've got... Uh, so the sun's got calcium and hydrogen calcium and magnesium, magnesium. And some more hydrogen. And wow, it's got all of these things. Where do they come from? Oh. Because the sun just started with hydrogen and helium. Mm -hmm. How does it wind up with sodium and magnesium well, and calcium? I'll be a chemist and I have to know that when you put them together, you make, uh, it's called nuclear fusion. And we can talk about that when we talk about the sun. Uh, there's a story to come. Yeah, story to come, but it is interesting. Where did those elements come from if it just started with hydrogen and helium? So interesting to know that whole piece of the pie. So, folks, that is the end of uh, that podcast. That's it. We'll see, see you next time. You.